our next topic is our Atomic Heart official review. Since we finally, well, I finally dived into it a lot more, and so did Austin after listening to my first impressions. Is that what got you hooked, or you just... I knew I was about to finish Hogwarts Legacy, and uh, I needed a new game. There you go. And, and, okay, well, you did have something to do with it, because you were like, oh, this is like Bioshock mm-hmm. <laughs> Wolfenstein, or maybe Brett said that. And yeah. I was like, oh, oh, I'll probably like this game. <laughs> I'll probably like this I mean, game. you had me at Bioshock, but then you really had me at Wolfenstein. So, What are you playing on? I am playing on PC. Cause okay, it's on the I'm Xbox playing on the has. PlayStation 5. So okay, I got you. Just get that covered. But I am using a controller. Okay. An Xbox controller to play. Okay. So basically playing on... I'm surprised you're playing a shooter with a controller. Um, this one's kind of... I, not you. I'm talking about him. Well, no yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> single, pl- single player games like give me a reason to use the controller. And yeah. I don't have to worry so much. But it really depends like what kind of game. But this one I, I do like using it. Anyway, jumped into it. Couldn't believe how amazing it is. I think this is going to be on my top three game of the year. Game of the year. Yeah. Damn. Wait, top three. Dude. It's going to be my top three choices. You already have three figured out? Oh, no, but okay. there's going to be one in there. <laughs> the first one's Hogwarts Legacy, but this one's going to be one of them. So. Okay. Anyway, I was. Um, what I really enjoy about this game is that so far the story's been interesting. The world's been well developed. It was like Bioshock meets... Um, Wolfenstein meets Fallout 4 because you have that whole like um, the Russians won World War II, right? Oh, so kind of kind of the theme. Yeah, on this one, on the storyline of this is uh, WW2 happened and as far as we know, the Russians have won. Gotcha. So. Yeah, so you have that culmination of all those games like the robots are kind of like from Fallout, but then you have that whole storyline of that different alternative universe from Wolfenstein, but then you have the cool um, abilities like Bioshock. Yep. And like, who would have thought that all come together? And it, it's interesting to not see the Nazis have won, or I think a lot of games do that. We're like, oh, the Nazis came out on top. Or Nazis like, bad guys. They, they, they aren't gone. No, this is the freaking Russians. And it's cool to hear like something different with new languages, not just freaking Russian all the time. Well, it's uh, not German. Sorry, Germany. Thank you. The Germans. Yes, the Germans. <laughs> get already get confused. Um, but I like how this game turns a lot of monotonous stuff into interesting things. Okay. Like, you know, coming off of Hogwarts Legacy, you go and you start searching through chests. And it's just like you hit a button and, you know, you get you get what you get. It's a it's a something you're gonna sell. It's an uh, an apparel you're gonna sell. And you're not gonna use it because it's probably not as good. Or that you do the Allah Mora thing, and it's like, oh, okay, I gotta do the same puzzle I've done fifty times already to open this chest to get what I want. But this one, when you go and search a chest, like you have this telekine- telekinesis thing in your hand that has these little um, Charles Charles the glove, yeah, which is a little tentacle guy who comes out of your hand. And he has like this uh, telekinesis effect where he opens drawers so you don't actually have to open them. And you just kind of hover your uh, hand around and you can look around this like um, chest of drawers that like open little by little. And they re- like, he pulls out uh, items that you use to upgrade your, your gear and make new gear. And I'm like, that is just different. It's something you don't see all the time. Like that's just so mo- much more interesting than just going up to something, standing over it, Hitting your hitting the A button or whatever, and mm-hmm. you had that little reticle like, "Oh, I'm doing something. All right, I'm done. Next on, on to the next one." And like in uh, Hogwarts Legacy, I just got so bored of opening chests. Yeah. Like, well, even with even with that feature, uh, what you're talking about, it still needs to be polished down a little bit more because I have instance where I'm searching through stuff, and he doesn't fully. Uh, I don't fully <laughs> search through anything because it's still grabbing shit. And I'll run through, and it's not grabbing everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to go back to it and search again. And also with the uh, with the scan feature. So you in in this game, you almost have like a. Um, I'm going to compare it to Assassin's Creed or Arkham Knight. You have your detective mode or whatever. Whenever you pull that open, it'll show things that uh, you can search in in like a blue color. Well, sometimes I, I'm already searched that area, and it's still highlighted like there's still something there. So I find myself going back to it constantly because this game, there's an open world aspect to it, right? But whenever you jump into the missions and stuff, it's linear. It's just straight to the point. 
and but you can veer off and sidetrack on things. So whenever I'm veering off and sidetracking and I'm doing the highlighty thing, my detective mode, some of the stuff I already searched through and I'm going back to it because I get so lost in the world. Oh. I'm going back to it and I come to it and I realize I already searched that area. I mean, that's just a, one of the, one of the many minute things that I've discovered in this game that annoys me. And that's one of the biggest ones so far. But anyways, go ahead. Um, but no, I, I agree with you that that fact that the whole searching for things is amazing. I, I yeah, like that animation. Different. I like just, just like different. sucking up all the gear and all the uh, well, all the resources out of whatever I'm searching. Yeah. And what I really enjoy about this, um, I, I think a lot of me enjoying this game is because I'm coming off Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, and you keep there's, comparing there's, it there's, to there's, it. There's <laughs> a lot of issues with that that, uh-huh. you know, like um, I'm going to kind of do a mini review or little aspects of that game. But, you know, within six hours, there was this really awesome progression in Hogwarts Legacy where, like, you get something new, you got new spells, you're unlocking things. Yeah. Like, you get to level 15 or 16, and finally you get to, like, use your skill, skill points. But, You've already accumulated some, so you can kind of like really have some fun with like how you're going to um, use those skills to either up your magic or whatever. Um, and I thought that was really awesome. But then there came a point in Hogwarts Legacy where it just kind of stopped, and it was just the same old stuff over and over again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get some new spells here and there. You get some. You can grow your talent tree and stuff, but. For the most part, like you have done everything the game has to offer, and now the, all there is is just to get through the story. But in this one, I think I've reached the six hour mark plus, uh, probably eight to ten hours. And I felt like every turn there was something new, like it kept me going. Like the carrot on the stick was there the whole time. Okay. Like going from. Yeah, you're in this world. Yeah, you're learning about the world. It's very interesting. You're learning about the character. You're getting some new guns. Uh, you know, searching for chests that are awesome or uh, weapon parts, and then using that to make new weapons. And like, it makes me want to explore this world. And then you get to the open world area, and they're throwing out new enemies left and right. Mm-hmm. Um, you get to uh, you know, you get all the robots are interesting, and then they start getting varied. And then you get to the um, uh, uh, the 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 leaves that go in people's heads and turn. Oh yeah, the the uh, how did uh, I compare them? Like the Last zombies. of Us, yeah, style zombies going on. Yeah, <laughs> so that that's a new thing. You're like, oh shit! So it's a whole new thing to deal with. And uh, with those, you have the little spores on the walls that if you're not paying attention, they keep like, spitting out they more. Spit those and then if you're in a room full of dead people and yep. you just get into those people, and then here's a whole other problem on your hand. And then later on. You get to the open the world. You can do so many more things than that, and you get these bosses. And then there's a new boss that eventually comes up. That's like a a blood vein monster. It mm-hmm. was like totally unexpected. Yes, and it's just like so, every turn there's something new, new and something and it's different. Really awesome. So all the enemies are very. Uh, I don't know what to expect. Yeah, you don't know what to expect. They're very. Uh, what's Everything the word I'm changing. looking for? Uh, uh, different. All the enemies, and it's not, it, you don't feel like you're fighting the same thing diverse. over and over. Diverse. They're very diverse, and it's just very unique. But my question is, is let's not compare it to Hogwarts Legacy. Let's compare it to something more close to what we're, what we're used to, like Bioshock. What makes this game better than a Bioshock game? Or Wolfenstein. Or Wolfenstein. I mean, or is, or is it, it? Yeah. It's not better than Wolfenstein, um, the New Order, right? That the last one came out. I think so. It's not New Blood because that one was. Bad. Oh, that's yeah. the DLC, yeah. right? New Blood. Yeah, I think it's the New Order. Uh, that yeah. one had it all. It had a great package. New, Col- of, New Colossus. New mm-hmm. Colossus. It had a great package of characters, uh, story development, just the story overall, and yeah, that was a very story driven game. Jason, okay. did you ever play the Wolfenstein? Games I did not. I ones? wanted to. I yeah. really wanted to, but I, I just, it didn't feel like the game for it me. Holds up. It, it holds does. Up. So it didn't. Uh, for Wolfenstein, and it's the same way with this one. So I might play Wolfenstein. Is that uh, whenever Bioshock came out, I felt like that's not the game for me. Oh, okay. you know, hands down, I felt like it was yeah. not the game for me. But then everyone started hyping up uh, Bioshock Infinite. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I have some extra money. 
And I do this a lot. I got some extra money. I'm going to buy a game that I'm not used to playing. I bought Bioshock Infinite and fell in love. So I bought the Masters and just played through them all because I just, well, the remaster, and I loved it. And then when this game came out, I was just like, man, I get that, I get that feeling, you know, that Bioshock feeling again. I'm like, I, I want to play this. I started playing it. I did the first long-ass tutorial mission because it is very long, and then you're going into the open world, and that's what turned me off. Like, very, like, hardcore, I don't want to play this anymore. I was about to turn it off and replay Hogwarts Legacy or put it on a Bioshock game because I was just like, this isn't what I wanted, you know? It just seems, it seems like Far Cry almost. But then I I jumped into it, and I was just like, let me suffer through it because I usually do that with games. I'll, I'll suffer through it a little bit longer because something can change. And then I realized that we have the open world, but the open world is just its own thing. And then your missions are very linear like Bioshock. And I'm like, yes, that's what I want. That's what I wanted from the Bioshock game. Because Bioshock Infinite kind of touched on that. I wanted to explore this world more. And now I have that chance. And I, that's why I think it's a little bit better than Bioshock. Mm. The mm. character himself, P3, I don't find him interesting at all. Like some of his backstory, I want to know, but I feel like I know what's going to happen. It's already like... It's how can I put this? It's, it's I can see where the story's going, and that's what kind of annoys me a little bit. But uh, beyond that, the gameplay is good. It needs to be polished up a little bit with like what I said about that, and then also me getting stuck in certain areas where the parkour. You gotta admit the parkour is fucking terrible. Have you done a lot of the parkouring in this yet? Mm, yes and no. Like, I feel like it's pretty standard, and I don't expect it to be any better than it is. Well, it's not going to get any better, but if I get like stuck between two boxes and I'm just <laughs> falling, I think, I think that's just a glitch. That's annoying. It's very annoying. It, ha- it's it has happened times. to me. Like, you think it's six worse or than uh, times. worse than Dying Light Two? Dying Light Two is better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. That that definitely. it's meant to be a parkour. Yeah. Game. Yeah. yeah. But. Comparing this to Wolfenstein and Bioshock, that's where I that's where I want to. Uh, wh- which one do you feel is better? You said Wolfenstein, but what? Why about Bioshock? Yeah, I tried to play Bioshock more recently, mm-hmm. uh, Infinite, and um, it was fun. I didn't get very far, but it's it didn't hold up because it's like very linear. And not a lot of stuff happens in the beginning. It's yeah. more just like, oh, you're walking, you're listening to people, mm-hmm. things are happening. Eventually, you get to attack some things. But was, this one it was just like well polished, knows what it's getting into, gets you right into the action. There's a lot of stuff happening. You can explore as much as you want to. You yes. don't have to. There you go. But it makes me want to explore every nook and cranny so I can get all these pieces to make all of these awesome weapons yep. and then on top of it it's like oh there are blueprints you can find in the open world to upgrade these weapons yep. and make them better i'm like oh carry I it on a stick man. definitely there it is i'm telling you man <laughs> i definitely need to do this check because, out them boxes yeah yep. I, there's so many different all the new creatures that they in uh, like bring to you i'm like i gotta get better weapons <laughs> <laughs> yes how how do you feel about the uh book bag you well, your what you carry on you did you notice that it's almost like the old diablo where there's squares oh and depending no on, yes I, I so you can't upgrade that uh you, you can, can upgrade it yeah you can get a lot more spaces but you can only carry a certain amount of stuff and yeah. it's is based off boxes and i didn't realize that until i had my shotgun and i tried to equip a ak-47 yep. and it took up too many spaces i'm like you gotta be fucking kidding me yeah yeah another turn off until i upgraded it is fine now because i can carry all my weapons but it was a big turn off at first okay i can see how that could be a turn off yeah it's uh, that was definitely unexpected mm-hmm. um but for me <laughs> for me it feels like a puzzle and I'm kind of used to that because some you know games in the past have had that yeah. issue, and um, or that kind of standard. And I was just like, all right, what is the best weapons? What do I have? Mm-hmm. You know, I used to carry three items when I didn't upgrade, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna carry four. I'm gonna carry the AK, the shotgun, 
the uh, shock pistol, and mm-hmm. obviously the melee weapon. Yeah. And so that fit enough where I could have some health and have uh, two stacks of ammo for each weapon. Okay. Yeah. But I ended up getting rid of the, the pistol because it is powerful, but I felt like... If I'm going to take something down, I'm just going to use my machine gun or my shotgun. Yeah. There's no reason to have another set of ammo in there, especially when the shock pistol. I don't know, man. You always need that backup, dude. I have it now. <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. it now because I have so much space. So yeah. it's like, why not just... I have all these components I can build stuff with. I might as well just build Okay. Build what I need, all what right. I have. Is there a skill tree in this game? Yes. Okay. So but there's... It's not, it's not your temper... It's not your normal set of skill trees. Yeah. So you have, uh, I think, six different areas where you can equip, not equip, but upgrade Mm -hmm. stuff. And it is your your core character that you can upgrade, like health, dodging, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Your energy that you use from Charles to do powers like abilities, you can upgrade that or upgrade like how much charge you have with your uh, stun gun. I'm yeah. going to call it a stun gun, okay. which uses no ammo. It just uses power from Charles. And then you also have all your abilities, which is uh, frost, telekinesis, shock, uh, poly gel, and that's it, right? Telekinesis launches people in the air. And yeah. You can slam them down. I love doing that. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you upgrade the telekinesis enough, you can pick up a shit ton of enemies and then drop them back down and do damage when they hit the ground. Yeah. So you can keep them up for a while and just shoot them, and then you can just drop them down. It just feels so satisfying picking up all these little guys and just like, and they just explode. It does a lot of damage. Yeah. Because sometimes you get surrounded by guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially, you know, like you were saying, you get backed in the corner. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, once you get backed in the corner, and that's what sucks about this game. Once you're back in a corner, you, it is. Oh, you're not moving. You're not moving. You get, you got to whip out that shotgun and go to town. Yeah. And plus, what's very unique is like each enemy has their own type of weakness against something. Uh, majority of it is going to be melee damage to all of them. Uh, but some of them have, they're like super weak against shock. They're super weak against uh, dropping or any of your powers, frost or something like that. Yeah. So you just have to, and that's another annoying part. You have to highlight, you have to use your detective mode to figure out what weakness they are. I don't do that. But that's annoying because by the time you pull up your detective mode, they're already chasing after you, especially yeah. the big bosses. Like the, the one boss that... Uh, Austin mentioned was the red jelly goo guy. <laughs> you don't have time. He is fast. He is fast and he's on a killing spree. And you can't use your guns because they do no nothing. Hardly any damage. Zero. Well, great. So I'm over there just dodging as much as I can. Yep. Shocking when I can. It just it's plus, normally slows down sl- slows enemies down, but it doesn't it do anything. It doesn't do anything. So it's so you, if you go into a battle and you die, you better be prepared for the next one. Yeah. It's almost like a rogue. I don't want to call it a rogue style. Yeah, what is the game. save situation like? Can you save whenever or so are there save I, points that you have to go to? There are save points. There, there are save points, but I came to the realization that if you're doing a story and you hit a story beat, like a chapter in that story, it'll save at that point. But if you're going through a dungeon or anything like that and you die, you're pretty much fucked and you have to start back over at your save point. Yeah, Damn. but there's like three save points in each uh, in in the dungeons as you're going through, and the dungeons is where you get your blueprints and stuff like that for your weapons, which I highly recommend just running through those because those will help you out a lot. Is there anything lower in this game than easy? I so I I'm gonna go I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna see, I'm gonna go to that. Um, no, there's easy, medium, and hard. Okay, I actually dropped this game down to easy after facing my first boss. Because wow. I enjoy the story, but it just is almost a nightmare playing and getting attacked and getting cornered so much. Because there was this one room or one mission that I went into. I dropped in there, and then all of a sudden, it like went in red alert alarm, and people, robots, just constantly coming at me. And I'm like, I can't do this. I just can't. I was just like, it's frustrating. Yeah, it gets tough. And especially, especially yeah. Yeah, and like... With the abilities, I wish the icon at the bottom was a little bit more noticeable. So you're only able to equip two abilities besides your shock. You always have your shock. But the two abilities, you can barely see what they are. You have to switch over. I have to hit up on the D-pad to switch. 
but I can barely notice what they are because it's like a white hexagon thing. And in the center is a symbol, and it's so tiny. So, so tiny. So tiny. So annoying. And then, like, the frost versus, because I got, the, when I first got my two abilities, it was frost and shield. Yes. And so when I switched, I think there was a glitch, because sometimes it would switch and sometimes it wouldn't. Yep. And it, when I looked at it, I was like, what What do what I have? What do I have? Equip? Yeah. I don't understand. They could have put, frost like, a sign. color to it or something. The frost sign is not frost. Yeah. It doesn't look like Frost. And see, that's what I'm saying about this game. It's a great game. It has everything, but there's little things that need to be polished up and fair fixed enough, on enough. it. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. But I, so it's not game of the year. No, I think it could be game of the year based, it, based on gameplay. And I have finished the, I haven't beat the game, which apparently might not have the best ending, but it definitely is ticking all the boxes. Yeah. And it's making me want to come back for more. Like I want to know what's going to happen next because it does mostly sim- seamlessly go from gameplay to cutscene yeah. to some degree. And the cutscenes look just like the gameplay. Yes. And I'm blown away like how great the game looks. Like I didn't have to change any because usually no, on yeah. these games I have to change my settings to get it to like the best FPS and make it look just as good as I want it to look. Mm-hmm. But like taking into account for like how much uh you know it's gonna affect my my gameplay. And I don't want it to play at 30 frames per second. I want it to play. I didn't touch nothing. Yeah. This game just played. This game looks and it beautiful. Looks amazing. Amazing. Outstanding. Yeah. They've done a really good job. Yeah. For a company, this is their first game. Their yeah, game that's, that's wild. Yeah. I was trying to find their pedigree, like where people have come from, the the, the people in the studio, where they came from. I didn't really find a good idea on it, but. It's like four dudes that came together. They were like, hey, let's make this really cool game. And they brought together a team, mm-hmm. which is now 110 people apparently around the world. So it's not a small team, but it's like still impressive that they were able to do this for the first title. And I think the reason why the ending sucks to this game from what everyone's telling me, well, from what I'm hearing, is just because it is very predictable. Mm. It's not yeah. that mystery vibe that Bioshock has, you know? Right, right, and, and I'm sorry if I keep comparing to Bioshock. It just feels like well, it's very. Similar. It looks a lot like, like a Bioshock game. Yeah. Well, to be fair, in Wolfenstein, there's a lot of twists and turns that are like, holy, and I don't I think, can't believe that's happening. And you see, I, even with Wolfenstein, I don't think we're going to get that giant twist and turn. It's going just going to be very because already is. I'm, I'm only two or three hours in, and I can already feel what's going to happen. Or it's very predictable. I just, I just feel like it's it's a much more mature game with a lot of stuff that's happening. There's a lot yeah. of politics involved and, you know, power grabs and things like that, which I already find interesting in its own right. Yeah. And so watching it play out, and yeah, I have like been like, oh, okay, I think this is happening or that's happening or this may happen later in the future. I'm just like, okay. Like, I'm okay with coasting and seeing what's going to happen, even if oh, yeah. I no, can no, guess no. ahead of time. Yeah, no, most definitely. It's going to be this or that. I mean, you're enjoying the journey. Yeah. You know yeah. you know how it's going to end, but you're enjoying the journey right. to it. So for $40, y'all can buy the Atomic Heart Atomic Pass, which is going to grant you four yet-to-be-announced DLCs. Four for DLCs game. for this game? Wow. Shit, dude. It might be worth I it. Might, we'll see. I might get that. I'm not going to lie. I, I do love this game. It does say that... Uh, you'll receive four unique DLCs opening up access to new areas and labs as well as new weapons, new enemies, bosses, an exclusive skin for your glove, and more. Hmm. I already like what I have seen. Yeah. there, There's very interesting moments in this game, especially with boss battles that come out of nowhere. And you're oh, like, my God. Oh, fuck, I wasn't ready for this. Like, <laughs> You don't know if you're going to survive or not. You're like, why? Why, why, why? I so, just started the game. Why are you doing this? <laughs> so I had, okay, one good example of this before we end this uh, segment, mm. or this review, is that I started with shield and ice. But then I was like, oh, I want to put some of my upgrade points to other things. So I took away my ice. And I got telekinesis. But then this boss comes out of nowhere, which I had no idea was coming. And uh, they're like, oh, if you put down some of that gel and then use some of your abilities. Oh, son of a bitch. You could help. I didn't do that. (laughs) Yeah, that's what it said before you fought this boss. And I was like, I only have telekinesis. And this other thing, this ain't going to work very well. (laughs) So that's another thing in this game. You can reset your skill points 
and your equipment. Good. You get you all get that you all of it back. back. Well, that's Which how it's supposed never to be. Happens. Happens. No, that's how it always is. No, no it's, it's not. not. Yeah, you get all your points back. Fuck no, it's you not. A, when you choose to respec. Okay, yeah, to respec, yes. But respec, like, it, doing a respec, you usually do it at the end of the game. You don't usually do it fucking two hours in. Yeah, you can respect at any point in time. Get all of your points back. But when you're... And crafting. Outriders cra- let crafting. you respec whenever you want it. Okay, fair enough. But yes, he's right. And usually in some games, you have to spend oh, money. He's right. <laughs> yes, the whole crafting, like I spent all of these points and things Into on this, this gun. weapon and yeah. to this gun. Yeah. And you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to scrap it and I get all that back. And because you find you stuff. find something better. So like, for example, I put all this crafting into a, a handle to a gun to make yeah. it better. But I picked up a better one. I can just equip that and it automatically gives me all the resources back. Oh, so I can, okay. So not yeah. even just, I thought you were talking about a skill points specifically. You mean like well, the crafting machine. Skill points and, and the crafting. Oh, yeah, you get it nice. all back. It's so nice. Well, because that's the thing it that's helps. always frustrating with like Borderlands. You know, you upgrade guns yes. and shit it's, like that. Yep. You have to sell them, you well, don't get any of that back. carrot on the stick because you, you're upgrading these guns and it's like, oh, you need a few more parts here and a few more parts there. And it's like, oh, well, you know, certain robots carry these parts, so I need to actually go look for them. Yeah, I got to go hunt them down. Them. And then use that, and it's like, oh, well, now I have this better gun. Well, screw the pistol I spent all those parts on. Now I can build this yep. super laser gun Yeah, that I'm going to carry around. Yep. It shoots out uh, explosive rounds of some kind. Of, I don't know. I didn't way. I didn't get that one yet. Oh, yeah. So you can hold it for the long charge. Oh, shoot, actually, I might have got it. Like I a just, grenade. Yeah. EMP. A EMP. Yeah. yeah. Or you can just shoot the little. God, the game's bubble. fun. I know. There's it's a, lot it's a fun things. game. Carry on a stick. It does yep. it well. I Give me recommend. that carrot. I think it could be game of the year. I think it will be nominated for game of the year. Yeah, I don't think it'll get game of the year. Yeah, I still think Hogwarts Legacy is going to get game of the year. Doubt oh, it. Even though that game has some problems with it. But here's the th- well, the, the the tricky part about this is that the two games that have so far been the best games of the year both have a lot of controversy around them, and that's what I'm worried about with with uh these games like yeah. just not this being one has controversy to... around it yeah it's they're russia it's russia there's <laughs> <laughs> no it's huge there was there was there was a uh this there's... is an alternative universe <laughs> <laughs> no, no no it's made by people some of them are from russia oh okay and there's like some russian ties there was even talks that they're they have some ties to the uh the kgb um there's a all rumor for sure but like there was uh, at one point on their website an old privacy policy that said that they're collecting information in this game and oh. selling it to Russian authorities or giving it to Russian authorities as part of their privacy policy. So there's a whole bunch of like controversy coming out about like, you know, in the state of where we are right now, what is, you know, how deep are the ties to this? Because they've come out very obviously, very explicitly on their website and they're like, we're not a political figure, a political tool for any nation. We have no ties to government. We do not do propaganda. We only have pure intentions, et cetera, et cetera. So they're very much trying to save face here. But it's like there's literally nothing about this company prior to the development of this game that exists out there and everything. So that's why when they came out, that one article, that one company came out and was like, here's why we're reviewing this, despite the potential ties to like the Kremlin. That's what it was. They were tied, potentially tied to the Kremlin. Um why we're doing that versus Hogwarts we, Legacy. We hate this girl more than we hate <laughs> Russia. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, yeah. Well, I would say to that article, uh, how about you look at all the ties that these, some of these games have with China mm. and tell me that there isn't a problem with that. So I still like their advertisement. Uh, uh, did, did you all get that YouTube video I sent? Yeah, with... Uh, with uh, uh, the Jensen Ackles. Yeah, yeah that was great. Oh yeah, that yeah. was so perfect. They, it, if you haven't seen it, it's a YouTube. Well, it's a trailer for this uh, for this game, and like, there's this little girl trying to fight a robot or like this dummy of a robot, and she's <laughs> dressed up like a wizard trying to do things. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and, uh, what's his name? Jensen came Ackles comes Jason out. Ackles comes up. And he's like, Nah, you ain't got to do it that way. <laughs> and just basically shotguns it and <laughs> uses all the powers in the atomic heart. <laughs> Just a stab at Hogwarts Legacy. I thought that was like perfect. I, that, <laughs> that that definitely so had to be good. a stab at Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. <laughs> or he's like, yeah, you can't use magic to fight these or some <laughs> shit. It's so funny. It's just so perfect. But he's kind of using some magic. No. Anyway, yeah, I, I think it's a, a definitely oh, yeah. must play for this year. Yeah. 
I just hope it doesn't get most underrated game of the year. To me, it was very unexpected, so it might. I know. Like this early in the year, yeah. With all these other major hitters are supposed to yeah. come out pretty soon, it's pretty impressive. 